uh, set up, I put it, it's in a setting now that it gets automatically recorded to the cloud. Oh, okay. So it looks like I could stop it, but it does start. Where's Hetty? Hi, Hetty. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm live. I was doing the same thing with Nate talking away. There's Madeline. <laughs> Uh, um, Robin said she'd be, she'd be about 10 minutes late, so, but she is oh, coming. Oh, okay. And Pat isn't coming. So that's us then. But we have a quorum, right? right. Yeah. Okay. So we won't wait for Robin if it's 10 minutes then. No, go ahead. Yeah, she said to go ahead. Okay. Um, so I was just, I had the um, agenda up. I just want to see. Yeah, that's okay. We don't have anything major to vote on. Okay. Um, well, I'll go ahead and start the introduction. Nate, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission's public meeting on Wednesday, December 14th, 2022, based on former Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Janet Marquardt and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. I'll now do, take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. As you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer, and please place yourself back on mute. Patricia Auth is not able to be here. Robin Fordham is going to be late. Madeline Helmer. Madeline, there. there she is. Uh, Becky Lockwood. Present. And Hetty Startup. Present. Great. Opportunity for public comment and questions will be provided during the general public comment period later in the agenda. Okay, take it away, Nate, for announcements. I don't have any announcements. I did send something later this afternoon. We can pick that up under unanticipated business. Uh, yeah. Uh, so really, I guess I can announce that I'm the staff liaison, you know, Ben has officially left the town and I'll be taking over for a bit. Um, it could be a few months, uh, could be longer. And uh, I staffed the commission a while ago, so I'm back. I'm, you know, I'm getting up to speed and um, thanks. That's it. Yep. Happy to always have you. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next thing is the preservation plan with the PVC, PVPC um, plans for working on it. You all received that in an email um, from, was it today? I guess, um, with the breakdown of what um, Shannon wants to cover and she's going to be here. She is here already. I'm not even looking at the screen. Hello, Shannon. Hi there. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. Sure. So I just wanted to make sure everybody had that in front of them. You've all had a chance to look at it. I can share the screen if that's, if, that, if we'd want that. Am I, is that good, Shannon? Should we do that? Sure. Yep. I, I put my own notes together because I'm not, I'm at home instead of at my work computer with everything in front of me. So but that's, that's fine, however you'd like to do it. Okay. Okay. All right. I can enlarge that a bit if that's. No, it's fine. We can just make it bigger on our, well, unless you're using a laptop, I guess. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for me to take it away? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay, well, I'm, I will reintroduce myself. I'm Shannon Walsh. I'm the Historic mm -hmm. Preservation Planner for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Happy to be working on the Amherst Historic Preservation Plan and to be here tonight to give you an update on the progress. So um, I thank you, Nate, for pulling this up. I have, um, just before I start referencing this, Nate and I had talked a bit about timing. So when this plan was, uh, when it kicked off late last spring, I think May 1st was when we started the contract, we had a pretty set schedule that Ben had, um, we had worked out. And with 
staff turnover. Um, this is supposed to be phase two and it's supposed to finish December 31st. Phase two is supposed to be focused outreach, but just with you know Ben departing, um, we actually have not launched that digital survey yet and we wanna make sure that we have enough time to do the outreach. So Nate and I had discussed pushing the plan back a bit. It was It's scheduled right now to end April 30th and pushing it back to ending June 30th with the end of the fiscal year to give us enough time to properly do the phase two piece and do outreach. Um, so that is the first thing I just wanted to mention. And then I will go on to the document that Nate is sharing. Um, well, first, does anyone have any questions about the proposed change to timing? We're good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it does happen. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next part. So the digital survey, which I believe you have seen and was going through the editing process. Um, my colleague Ken Komia and I met with Nate and the planning team on November 7th and or right around then. And then we sent the word version um, a bit revised to the Amherst planning department just to get it tweaked a little more. We want to make it as streamlined and straightforward as possible while still having the objective of, you know, being able to gather that information and data from the community. We talked about some of the higher level questions being posed directly to the planning board and municipal staff and removing them from the general public survey. So that is one of the things that Nate was working on. And then once the language and the platform were finalized, we were talking about doing um, a Google survey or uh, Ken at PVPC, they have another survey that land use uses. And then there was also talk about doing it through the Civic Engage Amherst site. So once that's finalized, we're going to heavily publicize it by the town and PVPC and get it launched. And I think we would hope to get it up and going in January and run through at least March because the more data we can get, the better. Um, and we're gonna, we decided to minimize the free answer options because um, having just done this in Holyoke and we had about 800 responses, which was good, but then someone had to process every one of those free answers, which actually ended up getting a lot of really interesting um, data, but we have a lot of questions right now in the draft that has, you know, kind of fill in the blanks. So we're gonna minimize that or maybe take all of them out and just have one anything else you'd like to add at the end. And then we're going to process all of that data because that I think will be really useful. Does anyone have any questions about the digital survey? No, I assume that you incorporated some of the suggestions we had. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Ben Great. brought those back to us. And then that was the first round of edits before we met with planning. Great. Okay. So for the yeah, just, so just quickly oh, with the survey, for instance, like the higher level questions, there are some asking about, you know, if the survey respondent knew if their house or property was historic. And you know, so there's a few things like that that staff, Christine Brestrup, the plane director, and I thought weren't necessarily important. And so there may be, you know, some tweaks there. And then like Shannon said, a lot of questions had in other category or you know another you know some type of um answer that could be then a narrative even if the question was multiple choice and so when she said we were going to streamline that the hope would be to have you know one or two questions at the end that could be a long answer that could be a narrative so as opposed to having mm -hmm. that you know for seven questions we could have that as a you know one or two final questions and that way really we're getting at what we want with the multiple choice or the you know, the question, someone can't, you know, skip all the multiple choice and then have some, some, you know, narrative answer that may or may not answer the question we're asking. So that hopefully will help with the data analysis and make the survey a little more, um, you know, efficient in terms of having people complete it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, we really, yeah, we want this to, to serve its purpose. And I actually just saw a survey for the community of Southwick. They're doing a comprehensive plan right now. And I really liked the way that they showed the data. Um, they even put, they had bar graphs and things, but they even put those other type answers in, in a really easy to view format. So I want to take a look at that again too. But um, we really, when we started this, we took the survey almost exactly from the current historic preservation plan um, and 
we wanted to start with that. And I think there's been a lot of feedback about making it, um, you know, more digestible. So we're tweaking it to get it to where it needs to be. Um, and I'm laughing, Jan, because my cat is also sitting on my lap. <laughs> I have two. I have one in front of me on the desk and one here. They just, Sorry. they want to be part of the meeting. Yeah, okay. they hear your voice. <laughs> so the digital survey, I think, is in good shape. We just have to finalize it and then we'll, it'll be exciting to launch it and um, promote it and then start getting people engaged in this process. Okay, anybody have any other questions or comments about the digital survey? Okay, so for the outreach meetings, this is what we brought it down to when we met in early November. Um, we're hoping to have one meeting with the planning board and get on an agenda of an upcoming meeting, probably January or February, and we're going to submit our questions in advance just so that you know people have time to kind of think about their answers and everybody knows what our purpose is for being there. So for stakeholder group meetings, um, we, had, we had kind of a long list to begin with of potential stakeholders. So it was thought that it would really be useful to do that as a virtual meeting, um, finalize the list, choose a date, have the agenda. So again, everybody knows what, what we're doing, what our purpose is. Um, and then we will process the data from that as well. And then the next category was municipal staff, also virtual. And I can't remember, Nate, was this, this was going to be separate from the stakeholder meeting or? Right. Yeah. We were thinking yeah. that, you know, staff from different departments would be in, involved in this. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, planning, conservation, it could be public works, recreation, and just have, you know, um, yeah, a fair amount of perspective here. Yeah. You know, some of the reasons we did this uh, when the outreach meetings were proposed, you know, it was, it, you know, it had Shannon or someone going to like a dozen different meetings. And if we could consolidate and have stakeholder groups and have, you know, 10 to 12 or however many individuals in a stakeholder meeting, there could be in number two, there could be like two stakeholder group meetings that would help streamline the, the outreach process. And there's always an opportunity for the survey as well, but this would help, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully get people engaged. And so, yeah, yeah. I think especially the, the municipal, whether the stakeholder group or municipal staff, that's kind of where those partnerships start to form where people see where their, their work is kind of crossing over or talk about maybe issues they're having. And um, it could be a really enlightening in a lot of ways. So that's the third piece, the municipal staff, targeted municipal staff, virtual meeting, um, really talking about things that concern people in that situation. And then again, we will process the data for that. And then the last Amherst Historical Commission and the Local Historic District Commission. So I already had the opportunity to meet with you all a few months ago and same with the Local Historic District Commission, um, following up with you now. And then I anticipate as the outreach gets underway and maybe even towards the end of that phase two, just coming to another one of your meetings and discussing some of the things that we've found. Um, but with all of this, it would be helpful if there are any specific questions that you feel would should would be helpful to ask of these types of categories, whether it's stakeholders who are out in the community working on partnerships and preservation and engagement, or municipal staff, um, or the planning department, if there's any questions that you really feel should be targeted questions that would be helpful for us to ask, then you could please share that with Nate. And we'll work it into the agenda. Shannon, do we have still, I mean, I remember some things along these lines, but the, uh, but the form has changed enough to get a sense of how many people are aware of the advantages of preservation, whether it's a, a homeowner or all the way to municipal staff. I mean, is there a sense of that you're gonna get back from these questions on that? That's a I, that's exactly why I'm asking you to ask this because that's a good thing that we could try to make sure we're targeting that type of question. Um, I think it'll be important in the future because we've been misunderstood or underappreciated mm -hmm. or people fight us if they it's become sort of polarized in the town between development and preservation. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. right. And so it would be nice to sort of know if people understand why preservation is important, even if we also are developing new things. And if there could be some question or questions that sort of teased that out, it might be mm -hmm. useful. Okay. 
And that's something too, I I just did this in, um, a, it was more of a heritage tourism plan that I was working on, but I had it as a sidebar of all the mm -hmm. reasons that historic preservation are important, um, but it would be very helpful to take the temperature of the community yeah, and find out where people to, are at right now. And to give them that information, they may mm -hmm. not have even thought about, so yeah. Yep. So I'm going to make, I'm typing this now to myself, that that would be a nice um, thing to have in the plan, even if it's a full page of these are the, and I love going to place economics. I'm not sure if you've ever read any of their studies. Um, mm -hmm. Donovan Ripkema in place economics, they do, it's all about the economics of preservation. He is Great. a historic preservation economist and he does, I want him to come to New England and do something. I think he did something in Rhode Island for the state of Rhode Island. He does studies about economics and preservation. Um, mm. He's worked for like the city of Savannah and he has all these really, his website um, has really useful reports that he shares with everyone once you know someone pays them to do it, but that anybody can use that data. And I like to put a lot of that, like he has 24 reasons why historic preservation is good for your community. So that's, I like to add that. Into Great. Yes. wherever I can. I tuck that in there. <laughs> yeah. And for the counts, town council and everything to see that. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody. That would yeah. Be Cause that is one of the things that comes up a lot. And Massachusetts, if you Google historic preservation or economics of preservation in Massachusetts, there's something that came out, but it was like a long time ago, <laughs> like mm -hmm. 30, 40 years ago. Um, that's data that's not easily easy to find except for through place economics. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, super. Anybody else have suggestions? Commission members? Yep. And if anything comes up, you can send it to me or send it through yeah, the commission. Yeah. I mean, Jan, following up on your, you know, your comment, you know, when we met with um, staff now with PVPC, we kind of asked that as well. And, you know, what, what do people consider preservation? You know, it's in the survey a little bit, but also kind of getting that, if, if it can be, um, you know, expanded on in these meetings because, you know, some people might think it's only saving, you know, high architecture or maybe it's something else exactly. and just trying to get another. It's only 19th century Victorians or something. Right, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's it's been seen as, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like, I can't think of the word, but it, it's been seen as something standing in the way of development and it it, it shouldn't be. You know, it should be mm -hmm. hand in hand. Part, it should be a kind of development, really. Preservation mm -hmm. should be seen as a kind of development, not as anti-development. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almost like I, I just wrote rebranding preservation in Amherst. So no, that there's, there's a new great, understanding yeah. of it. And I, the, the, if Ben, I believe Ben shared the draft with you all a few months ago when I had the, the very first draft with mm -hmm. some of the deliverables and I put a quote on the front page that was kind of tied to preservation and, but, you know, moving forward, not looking backwards. Right. Yeah. I had, I wrote a little piece for one of the local digital rags about how they can go hand in hand, but it didn't get much notice. Um, but it's something we need to keep kind of pounding the pavement with mm -hmm. in town. So great. Okay, do you have anything else? Uh, does anybody have any concerns about her plans or anything other than the questionnaire? Um, see, I, I just wanted to, can you hear me? Um, yes. Ask if like sustainability and um, environmental sustainability is part of the, um, what, you're, what you're asking around. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think that that is a very important thing always to talk with um, related to preservation because it's the, the ultimate recycling is one of the quotes about it. So yeah. that I mean, is something I slip into anything whenever I'm talking about community planning, um, but I'm going to look back at the digital survey and, and see if there are any questions related to that. Yeah, and just whether Amherst is considering how just the sustainability of preservation is Part, kind of incorporated into their um, environmental sustainability planning mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, good point. It, that should ring a lot of bells in Amherst as they're planning so hard to try to reach goals. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, also, I kind of 
came in late during this process. I just joined um, a few months ago, the commission. Um, and I was wondering if, is there a consideration of kind of municipal owned buildings and um, kind of like capital planning for? Yes. For yeah. preservation? Yep. And Ben had given me, which I've, I've never seen this before. There's like a, there's a document or that was put out about the, the status of municipally owned buildings. Um, that was something he sent me early on in this. Um, but yes, municipal owned buildings, historic buildings, especially because a lot of them also hold archival materials and, yeah. and things like that, or are eligible for funding because they're maybe their criteria as being historic. Yes. Okay. That is definitely part of, of what we're looking at. Okay, great. Thanks. And that's why part of that um, municipal staff meeting also is always important to have understand who in the town is in charge of the buildings, have to, to do the upkeep, has to, you know, keep um, doing preventative maintenance and things like that. Define okay, all those roles. Thanks, Madeline. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you, Shannon, for coming and for staying with us throughout this process so we know what's going on. I'm so happy you're doing this. It's going to be really well. Sure, yeah, I have, I've really enjoyed it so far, and I look forward to um, the outreach process because that's when we're really going to get to, you know, kind of know the heartbeat of the town and understand where where everybody sits and what people's concerns and, and uh, things like that are. But there's one more thing on the agenda. Um, related to the National Register nominations. Yes, that's our next thing. You're on again. <laughs> yes, I'm on again. Okay, this is a this is a funny one. So, <laughs> and, and uh, Nate, I don't know if you had a chance to read all the back and forth I was sending you today with Ben Haley. Okay, so to get everybody up to speed, many, many years ago, <laughs> we submitted- In a land far, far away. In a land far, <laughs> far away named Boston, we submitted, <laughs> three National Register nominations. So there was the Dickinson District expansion. Well, before that happened, we had updated or completed area forms, which was my predecessor. So I started in 2017. It was before that, probably 2015, 2016. My predecessor submitted area forms and um, I ended up finishing them. And then Betsy Friedberg, rest in peace because she just passed away, and Ben Haley from Mass Historic came to Amherst and uh, we rode around with Brandon Topons, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we looked at all the different areas and they said, yes, we agree. These should be the boundaries. These, you know, you can do the East Village expansion, the Dis Dickinson District expansion and the Depot District. So those National Register nominations were completed and submitted. The Dickinson and Depot nominations went through one round of edits at Mass Historic and came back and then were resubmitted. And then I submitted the East Village nomination for the first time, going off of all of the things that were edited in the Dickinson District expansion, because I, I thought I was very clever. And if I caught it up front, it would be a shorter editing process. So this summer, the East Village nomination edits came back probably in August with feedback. And this is from Ben Haley now. He's the current National Register Director. So... He said that the National Park Service standards had changed and expansions for an area with older documentation now require the entire newly, so there's the East Village in the center, and then the expansion was above, below, and to the left and the right. He is now saying that the entire thing has to be submitted as a new nomination. Mm -hmm because it was an older submission, even though Betsy Friedberg actually was the one who worked on the original nomination and it was very well done. And I took everything she told me to do with the new expanded nomination. I took photos of every single building in the middle of the district and I described alterations over time and added the building. So he said, sorry, we now have to do a whole new district. So I was, I had talked about this a bit with Ben and, and Nate, and we had emailed back and forth and I was waiting on the Dickinson district expansion and the depot district nominations to come back to understand what we were really looking at and to present it to you all and see where, what you would like to do. If you want to proceed 
um, because we are not we are out of contract with this project because it was so many years ago. Um, so I wrote Ben today and he said that the Dickinson and Depot nominations, he's hoping to have the edits back to your town and to us at the end of the year, possibly, but that especially the, they're both going to need more edits and the Dickinson district has to be completely resubmitted as an entirely new district like the not East the Village. Dickinson, you mean the East Village, not Dickinson. Both of them. Isn't Dickinson oh, also of... an expansion? It is, yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. So both the... districts that are being proposed for expansion because they were originally placed in the National Register in maybe like the 80s or the, um, they're saying that they we have to submit it like it's a new district. So I told him that if you decide to proceed, we really need to have a full-blown conversation, virtual meeting with him to understand exactly what is required because a lot of time and money have gone into these. Um, and he said, okay. <laughs> it sounds like you should be able to use all the documentation you provided for the expansion and just put it into an application, right? It's yes, it's just semantics, I guess, but it, it's it's frustrating because this has been paid for and a lot of time has gone by and sure. they yeah. moved the finish line during the process. But I, I guess think, yeah, we can blame the that, National uh, Park Service for it. Yeah, some mm -hmm. of it is that the, you know, the East Village was early and Dickinson was as well, the National Register Districts, the, the forms are old, some of them. And so, I mean, I, I kind of get it, but that's not the information we had when we, we started this. And so, <clears throat> yeah, Shannon, I was thinking about, um, there might be some CPA money you know, we have two pots for um, inventory work. It wasn't necessarily for this, but it was for inventorying properties. And so, I don't know, I was thinking about having, you know, if we, if right, if this were to move forward, I'd want, you know, you in, an, in another contract. We're not gonna, you know, the previous contract is done, mm -hmm. the work was completed. And so really this would be a new project, new contract. And so I'm a little disappointed it's taken so long. Um, you know, I remember when they came out and it seemed like everything was great. You know, you made the revisions after the site visits. And so it really was, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some, you know, some, some editing, but more a formality to get through the process, not, you know, having to say, um, almost start over again with completing forms and research. So I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I was, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of just thinking like, can we, can we move some money around and have that happen? Or does it wait now and become another CPA request next year or something? Because we don't, you know, we wouldn't have the money available otherwise. Well, we you know, have discretionary do. funds a little bit, right? Or is that the CPA money? That is CPA. So there is some, uh, there is a little bit. And then there's some, you know, we have, I think from two years ago, $25,000 for uh, inventory work. So it could be that Dollars. it can be applied here. Yeah, well, let's do it while it's still fresh enough that it doesn't have to be even more redone. Right. Over. I know. Yeah. I'm really hoping that they're going to take the photos because it's hundreds of photos. Mm -hmm. um, and then he said there were too many way. photos. So I, I'm not, I really need to understand what he <laughs> wants because they did, we were told that they needed photos of all of the existing district buildings to see what they look like. But then he said, there's too many photos. So we have to strike a balance somewhere in the middle. And yeah. I just want to be very clear on what he is requiring so that we understand what um, the funding and time would be. But I do, I do hope that this could proceed because I think that um, when when a new nomination goes in, it sits, it kind of goes really to the back of the pile. But if there's something that is more freshly edited and then you turn it around and get it in, um, it it in my mind anyway, they, because they want to move them, they only meet. The commission, I know the next upcoming meeting when they hear nominations is March, and then I think they meet in the summer. So it's not, it's, they don't meet very often to even uh, go through that. Mm -hmm. But I've encouraged him if we, it would be really great. And I sent him also the letter that Betsy had sent in 2018, telling exactly what needed to be done for the district, <laughs> just to remind him that okay. uh, we need some guidance just so that this is, is as straightforward a process as possible at this point. Shannon, I have a question. Sure. Um, do you know what's happened with the um, process of the nomination that was created by, I think it's Sharon Malloy or Shannon Malloy for the Bay Road Historic Corridor? 
I was going to ask that too. That that one was turned down during the site visit, wasn't it? It was. Um, well, so I I did the Bay Road, the did Nuttingville you? area. Is that yeah? The, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, Sorry, so I'm I'm getting my Shannon. No, that's okay. Up. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, the so when I came onto PVPC, Elizabeth Rera had was in the middle of a project that was all of Bay Road, and then when Betsy Friedberg and Ben Haley came, and we went to East Village Dickinson District Depot District, and then down to Bay Road, the MHC thought was okay. Not all of Bay Road. It's the Simeon Smith Farmstead. Yes. And then the the one that was a um a tavern that's all brick. Right. A little the further down the road. Yeah. Those two they felt were potentially individually eligible, especially the Simeon Smith Farmstead. And then the Nuttingville area. Mm -hmm. Um which includes a few other houses. Yeah. Yes. So uh Brandon, I had explained to him that for the individual buildings, they're very particular it has to be um inside and outside unless it's very significant for a person and we had stopped at the point where I, I know I spoke with the owner of the the brick property that was the tavern and sent him information and then didn't hear from him but we would have required they would have required interior photos and full cooperation from the owners yeah. um, but the Nuttingville area was I I think the last I had it had gotten was that I was going back and forth with Brandon about trying to move that, but that's still, it, it did get that determination of potential eligibility. So. Well, that's you know, kind of where that's it's something stopped. we should keep in mind for once this other thing is resolved and we can yeah. be district straightened out. The next thing would be to see if we can then start the nutting bill because there's nothing down in the South end of Amherst um, other than the South common, but, down to Bay Road. I mean, that was an important historic area and, and we have nothing, you know, documenting that or keeping it. So yeah. yeah. And, and I did push, historic. I pushed for Bay Road because Bay Road itself is so historic, but they don't exactly. they don't like doing roads. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was say. Yeah, they wouldn't, there was too many um, you know, it was too incongruous and in you know, so there's too many properties between historic home. So a mass historic had initially, you know, they thought maybe, and then they, as Shannon said, they came back and said, no, especially after seeing it. Um, so yeah, it didn't, you know, it was, it was disappointing. We were trying to make the case that Bay Road itself is, uh, you know, the trail is a historic resource, but the districts don't really, it's like, they're not meant for that type of resource. Mm -hmm. And so it's maybe more of like a scenic byway or a heritage. Yeah. There were too many houses in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, took I took pictures of all of them. I walked that whole road, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm glad. I think that that definitely should be something on the back burner to consider and, and potentially move forward. Um, but the other three they're they're so close. We just need clarity. 100% clarity on what they want um, and what we can right. use that has already been done to right. make it to not, you know, redo things that have already money has and time has already gone into. So, okay. well, Shannon, let Nate put that on, you know, fast forward to try and find funding and we'll try and get that pulled together while it's still fresh enough. Okay. Fresh enough. <laughs> All right. That great. sounds great. Okay. Thanks for coming and yeah. spending the time to meet with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Right, thanks. Okay. Um, right. So next we should talk about our officers going forward since this is my last meeting. Um, and Robin, are you there and not looking at us or are you not even listening? I'm here and I've been listening. Yay. I'm, just, Yay. I'm driving. I'm just about to close to my house. So we're good timing. Okay, good. Well, after you get out of the car and before you get in front of the computer, we're going to elect you chair, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Madeline and I were having some discussions. I was encouraging her that if she wanted to take chair chairmanship or chairpersonship, she could, and I would agree to be vice chair, continue as vice chair, but I will okay. let her speak. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to her right. while you're getting settled. Okay. <laughs> okay, Madeline, speak to us. Oh, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm on, I'm still on the fence. And I was going to talk to Robin, 
tomorrow to learn more, but yeah, it seems kind of soon for me to um, step in because I, I haven't even um, attended very many meetings um, and what especially if, um, kind of like a, yeah. If you were to be vice chair and you had sort of an agreement with Robin that, you know, either if she couldn't attend, obviously you'd be there, but also maybe in a year you might be willing to take over or something. Because I know she's got so much on her plate. If there were a way for her to feel like this wasn't a life sentence, she might feel better about taking it on. <laughs> Robin, are you home yet? Uh, I'm all <laughs> no, 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 that's, yet. I, that's perfectly agreeable for me to take it on um, until until an appropriate uh an appropriate substitute comes forward, but yeah, that would be great. I mean, I, I can understand where Ellen is coming from. Um, I mean, I feel sort of equally unprepared, but I'm I'm willing to take one for the team. <laughs> None of us ever feel ready. You just have to dive in. <laughs> right. I yep. just haven't attended a hearing yet, um, mm. so I don't even really know how. <laughs> I don't yeah, think I would be able to take the reins. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can. You can. We can vote on me. Okay, great. Uh, well, that's good. You can now recuse yourself by turning off the car. <laughs> oh, do I have to recuse myself? I thought I, get to, I, thought I got to vote for myself. No, I'm no? just teasing. I'm teasing. No, okay. yeah, right. yeah. so, um, so we need that, but then we're also going to have to talk about, besides that, um, who is going to be the designee for the significant building um, consultation with Nate, basically, unless we know, well, actually, whether it's Nate, it is a designee and then the person who consults or whether it's one of us, one of you all. Right, and I think at the previous meeting, you may have, I don't know if you voted me or you, I think you did, but we I did. just wanted, you know, with, I think we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. And so I just wanna make sure if that's fine, that, you know, that's, that can work. Um, but just, I, you know, I wanted to have that be also a discussion and then among among yourselves, who do you, you know, Nate, are you automatically going to talk to Robin or would Robin rather have you go over it with somebody else? It doesn't have right. to be the chair. It doesn't, right. And it can't, we wouldn't really want to vote that. Um, I guess our um, KP law, the town attorneys recommended kind of having it just be, if someone on the commission or one or two people would, you know, be willing to hear from me from time mm -hmm. to time without necessarily being designated. But, you know, for instance, if Robin said, sure, I can, or if not, you know, she's too busy, then if another member was willing to kind of be an ad hoc, um, you know, ear for yeah. me. So, you know. It can't, um, it can't be a meeting because then right. it's a public meeting law, but it can be notifying whoever is the commission member, what you've decided, and then let the commission member say, I don't agree. And if they, if the person doesn't agree, it automatically, according to the bylaw, goes to a hearing then. Right, so this yeah, this step is when we receive a, a, a an application to demolish a building, we have two weeks to decide if it's a significant building. And so right now I'm the designation, you know, the designee to determine that and there's criteria in the bylaw. And so sometimes it's easy, uh, but it may be, for instance, there's one that just came in last week and, you know, it could be that, um, I'm not sure, and then I would consult with someone, and then if there's disagreement, it automatically goes to a hearing. Um, if we're in agreement that it is significant, then it does. If it, we're both in agreement that it isn't significant, then it doesn't go to a hearing, but it'd be right. in those instances where staff, uh, you know, would just like to talk through an application. And, I'm, you know, I don't think it would be every one, but there, you know, there are a few that would come in that, um, you know, just be, it'd be good to sometimes uh, talk through it. Yeah, Ben and I had that happen. So, yeah. okay. So, um, shall we go to a vote then? Um, somebody will have to nominate these folks. Oh, Becky, oh. <laughs> she I'll jumps to get somebody else I'll to do it. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm nominating Robin <laughs> as chair. Okay, one at a time then. Do you want to do one at a time? I think it's easier, isn't it? Yeah, we might as well. Okay. So Robin, are you still with us? She looks signed in. She unmuted herself, so it's... I don't know. And Hetty, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, 
Robin, if you're there, you can vote. If you're not, you're going to be voted in, I think. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Either way. Okay, so I should do a roll call attendance, I think, for this. Uh, roll, I mean, a roll call of votes, right? Does Do we need matter? to second it, or is it just? Oh yeah, moment? somebody should second it. Hetty, you want to second? I can second. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so we will vote on the nomination to make Robin Fordham the chair from January twenty three forward, and I will ask for your vote, Madeline Helmer. Um, yes, I vote yes. Okay, Becky Lockwood? Yes. Hetty Startup? Yes. Robin Fordham? Yes. <laughs> and I don't know whether I should vote, but it sounds good to me. I say yes. <laughs> okay, it passed unanimously. All right. Uh, congratulations, Robin. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm <laughs> too excited. Um, and now we need a nomination for vice chair. Nominate Madeline Helmer. Anybody want a second? I'll second it. Okay, Becky seconded. Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Robin Fordham. Did you vote? Hear me? I? No. Oh, did you say yes? I couldn't hear you. Yes. Can you okay. hear me now? Yes. Um, <laughs> Eddie Startup. Aye. Rebecca Lockwood. Aye. Madeline Helmer. Aye. <laughs> that was <laughs> tentative. Aye. And I vote yes. Okay, great. We have officers. And um, do we want to continue that the designee for significant decisions is Nate with consultation with Robin or does do we want to do it with anybody else? That's what we want. Everybody's yeah, got okay. it. I, if Robin can't do it, I'd be willing to step in for that part of it. Okay. That's I'm that's great. Yeah, that sounds good for me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Becky and Robin. Um yeah, you know, I talked with the building commissioner and he his, you know, he's more comfortable with even if I if I'm unsure whether or not I would consult with a commission member then just to say that it's significant and go to a hearing because mm -hmm. you know often then there could be disagreement and so when he's looking at things say for the zoning board of appeals if there there's a part in the bylaw where it could be his decision and he's unsure or you know something isn't quite the way it needs to be he always would have the zba then make the determination so it's not you know if there's something that is um you know isn't isn't you know so discernible from the application? Then either we can ask for more information, which I will, which I do anyways. And if it's still not clear, then you know I'm I'm inclined to have it go to a hearing. But okay, okay, great. That's good. Good to yeah. know too. Super. Yeah. Okay, it's been um, forty-one minutes, and we have a bit to do yet. So I'm going to move right on to discussion of the CPA process and projects and. The idea is to prioritize the proposals so that when Robin um, goes to the final battles, she is armed, right? Um, we are already, well, actually, we, we almost made it through historic preservation last week. So we've got oh. the two, um, but actually, this would be a good opportunity. The two churches, I think, are left. And um, the, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what the number is for the North Church. Um, I wanted, I guess I wanted some feedback from the committee because the North Church application, you know, through through nobody's fault, sort of by the nature of our application process um, has, you know, it came in with a really large number for doing everything. Um, I think right now they're just asking for repairs and a new slate roof and during discussions when they had Coon Riddle there, I asked if there was possibility that the, the, the basically the, um, I think the Coon Riddle uh, report was that structurally everything looks pretty good. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that uh, if there was sort of like, you know, can you button that roof up enough to make it through the winter to give more time to develop a fuller, um a fuller scope of work and and have more estimates come in and so i don't know 
which way um, this committee wants to go. Um, and I have, I am hoping to introduce after we vote on everything in terms of the CPA process to talk about next year, getting some sort of process underway where we can get historic preservation projects in front of the historic commission, like in April, right. not applying, but discussing it so that people have a lot of time to come to CPA with their application with um, the right number of estimates and a full understanding of the whole process and you know what the restrictions going to be. We tried with one, North so. Church. We did see North Church quite a while ago, and we tried. They just didn't quite understand. Yeah, we and, and I yeah right. But I mean, I think I think that's the process that needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just some some, some some maybe in you know even tighter hand holding, but um, but anyway, the in, matter in, in hand right now is whether or not is, yeah. So the yeah the CPA committee meets is just tomorrow night right that's um yep yep I'll share a screen there was a straw poll that was um sent out you know this uh, this is visible where it's kind of this um the average over here the far right column is what's you know shows kind of the you know the weighted average of votes and so you know the conservation of the um, Mabel Loomis Todd paintings um, you know has a pretty high uh, vote as do the two church projects. And so, you know, the, you know, what becomes important though is the amount of funding that's available um, for, you know, for all, you know, for all, you know, there's a lot of projects. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to note quickly that what's in blue is debt service. And so, uh, you know, the Jones Library has yet to um, call their, the borrowing, but you know, as you can see, there's usually quite a few projects, CPA projects, you know, so if you if you bond it, then, you know, it, it's, you know, usually we do a 10 year write down. And so it just, you know, it, it's future funding that's not available, um, but that's set aside for this. So right now we have you know, a number of projects that's housing and recreation. Um, but, you know, anyways, at some point we've had, we used to have some historic preservation projects there, but we've paid those off. So that's what it would look like, for instance, if we provide a lot of money for, um, say, the North Church, uh, you know, this could become a 10 year, you know, write down. And so, you know, over the course of 10 years, we'd have a little bit paid off each year. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that our, some of our projects are some of the highest um in the poll does that suggest that besides the historic preservation funds that some of the general funds might be moved to these i don't quite get the get your question isn't there money set aside for each of the areas plus a general one that can be tapped? no it's there's a there's an entire amount and you're required to spend i think it's 10 percent of the total available in each category and if for some reason you can't then you then you have to set that 10 percent aside you can't spend that if there were no historic preservation project applications you couldn't spend the 10 percent that should be allocated to historic preservation you'd have to um reserve it for the following right, year so that would become problem. dedicated funds. but that's not an issue this year, right right so you know say there's a million and a half dollars right then there's one hundred fifty thousand. um and so, yeah, I think that we would, I don't think there's a problem there, right? So that's, that's what, Jan, that's what you right. meant, meant, right? So there's a, you know, a portion of CPA funding every year that's not really, you know, it doesn't need to be allocated to a specific purpose. It can be go to any, like Robin said, any, uh, any project. And that's why right. I was thinking maybe that could be added to our allocation because we have such high votes for these projects to help. Well, what, what is the total amount this year? Oh, How much like is our seven, oh, of historic preservation? Uh, that I yeah. don't know. I think the total pot was like, was it like 1.7? And then with the debt service, it's down. But no, I think it I think it was 1.9 plus what do we have? 500,000 in reserve that, that's available to us with having mm -hmm. factored in debt service. I mean, it was still a good amount of money, but the problem is that we have. I think one three million dollar ask and one one point eight million dollar ask. I mean, 
those two, the, the affordable housing asks are so huge. Yeah. And then um, the fields too, it's kind of like skewing everything. Like when I'm looking on this in my chart, as I'm working through it, I've, I've put the fields and, um, and the, um, what's the 1.8 million? Yeah. Um, I'm just assuming those will go to bond and then I'm working off that total. And then it's actually not as dicey, but the problem with the North church is that they've submitted different numbers. I think right now they're asking for 175,000. Is that what it says there? I'm looking at this on my phone. It's all just. 158 seven. 158 okay. seven. yeah that must be just the roof and right so that yeah. yeah so um i guess the only thing that i would be negotiating or that the cpa co committee might be negotiating is saying you know is there a smaller number where we don't replace the roof you just make sure it doesn't leak for the next year mm -hmm. um it's kind of late do to go? do that work right i mean this well, would be yeah. immediate funds anyway. This is not, this is emergency funds, not. Well, that, not yes, this, and we would ask for, for this particular project and um, to go to, I guess, so that would come from the reserved funds. So that would mean it would be immediately available so that they could get started right away. But, um, mm -hmm. and then I think it was going to, and the other, the other comment I had was that the South Church, did bring up um, the Mass Preservation Projects Fund, which, you know, I mean, they're, they're so well organized and they'd be such an excellent candidate for, but they said that the normal grant um, timeline for them wouldn't get them funded until like November. And they, due to the nature of the destabilization of the tower, they want to get started earlier. And I suggested that they contact MHC because there are emergency stabilization funds that are supposedly available off cycle. Um, and we all um, got that questionnaire asking us if we could do with any less, mm -hmm. right? So did they right. answer that? Do we know? Um, we do know, and I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I mean, I think they had a, they had a, a match. They, I think they said they could put in a little bit more money, but it wasn't like a big, yeah. you know, it wasn't right. a big number. Right. Um, right. Like I mean, my only... Right. My main con concern about it is just I'm just trying to push forward the idea that we really get applicants to aggressively go after other funds that they're eligible for that they're good candidates mm -hmm. for. Like that's my frustration is not so much how much they're asking for, how much they're putting in, but that if we continue to not have our applicants try to, um, you know, take advantage of of you know, to not not to not to not get any any CPA at all, but to see if there are other funds available so that we can stretch our CPA dollars yeah. further. It's just so kind of late money. this year. Next, I year, know well, that yeah. Early yeah. on, we need to really push that. But right, um, right, yeah. Yes, yeah. I did look. You know, Robin was right. So yeah, I guess there is about one point nine available even after debt service. So that is a yep. quite a bit of funding. That's if plus, there some plus five hundred thousand, I think, in reserve. It's, yeah, which I mean, bit. if yeah, I could see ours is practically covered, then if we just do our portion and our requests, right? Well, it's one point, so it would be one hundred ninety thousand. The reserve doesn't count because that's from last year. So the, you know, the um, that's divided in three. Yeah, I mean, Robin, I guess the question Four. would be, you know, if if the CPA committee really wants to know you know what are the priorities if they ask from the historical commission i mean is it you know um you know there there were some questions about the president you know the preparation of the preservation restrictions and mm -hmm. you know is that eligible um you know the the barn building we had mentioned you know in your response that we could you know have you know you know take, we could take significantly less funding uh, but still, we'd like to have some as a pilot program. And I think that's, you know, to me, that's pretty manageable. I don't know how they feel about it. It's then really, you know, we have these big projects with, you know, the two roofs, you know, for the, right. the Dickinson farmhouse, the church, and then the steeple. And so those become right. really big projects. And so is it that they get partially funded or do we fund one or two in, in their entirety so they can get done? Um, I'm trying to look up my um, 
let me just look up my spreadsheet for what I tabulated. You know, I always do this spreadsheet and I um, I play around with the numbers myself, like, you know, what I would vote for. Um, and I think if you take those two big projects out, and they're so big that you can't really, I mean, I suppose you could fund the East Street School anyway, but um, let's see. Like I put the East Street School into bonding, which means we don't have to think about it this fiscal year. Like the committee will still vote on it, but it will hit other fiscal years, right? And then if you take um, Fort River out, and then I think I think you can fund pretty much, well then, then we have, um, I think there's money for, I guess what I'm trying to say is, because I'm looking at this now, I think there's money for the full funding of both churches. Um, which are the point, is, don't we get about a third of the total? Well, we don't. We get. We don't need to. We, you know, we're required to have ten percent, and then right. But I mean, couldn't we have up to a third as our allocation? Right. We could have more. No. But... No. Could yeah, we could have the whole thing, but, but we're I mean, we're only traditionally. I thought it was split basically in three, and then after that they could pull others. So there... up. No, there are four categories. I thought there were three. Right, open space, affordable housing, historic preservation, and recreation. Affordable okay. housing has two asks at least. Yeah, there are two large asks, one for 500 and one for 750, that are these kind of ballpark asks. So those could be dropped pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking at this, I'm feeling like we can fund um, the Dickens and the Dickinson project moved down to 97,000. Mm -hmm. The North Amherst Converse Congregational Church moved from 650 to 158. And then the South Congregational Church is 233. I think that we can fund everything, not just in historic preservation, but pretty much everything else too, um, if those other projects are bonded. And I don't anticipate getting a lot of pushback from CPA on anything here um i mean i think that they've all got pretty strong support among the other um the other cpa committee members my question was just this question about um the north the north amherst congregational church and basically how we feel about going with this you know this one estimate that they got of 158 7 to do the the roof repair and put on a new slate roof yeah, or look alike slate. I mean, if it's cheaper at this point, they need, you know, safe, a safe building more than they need. Right. I mean, then this is where it gets gets challenging because um, that they're in a historic district. Mm -hmm. There are slate roofs all around them. They also have an incredible uh, southern exposure on that um, south side that could, you know. To really and well it's with, just in with such solar, bad shape, we, to go for right, a I, slate yeah. roof at this point is kind of it just seems throwing money, you know, into well, see, and well. that's that's right. That's the question that I have. This kind of gets to the question I have about this project is that it's like I feel like we're just going to be, and you know, I'm ready to support it, but I I feel frustrated that we're in this position where we have to make a really snap decision about putting a really large amount of money into a really significant building without mm -hmm. sussing out all those questions. Like, should this be an asphalt roof in anticipation of a no, solar but, array? Well, should it be- well, what about the, be, the, farm, the Dickinson farmhouse roof material that they've selected? That looks like slate, but it isn't, and it's a lot cheaper. Right, but they're not in an, they're not in an, no, no, district. no, not for them. No, I'm saying, couldn't that be used on the North Church to help get some of this other really important stuff done? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that I think that's the that's the conversation that we don't have time for. You know, yeah. we're basically just we've got one estimate. We've it's 158 seven. It's to put a new slate roof on, and that's what I you know what I'm going to have to argue for tomorrow like we yeah i mean i we, think the because... difficulty is 
you know, for instance, the South, the South Congregational Church, they, they, you know, invested heavily in their building mm-hmm. say, in the last 10 years, right? So they've done right. a number yeah. of capital improvements, upgrades. And so really the steeple becomes something that is about maintaining the historic, you know, architecture and look of the, of the building. Well, um, it's also to keep the rest of the building from being destroyed when that falls over and when it falls over i guess with the you know now the zion church the 158,000, it's like is it enough to do anything and they're going to have to come back you mm-hmm. know i mean the question is are we going is this going to become a multi-year project oh absolutely and we told them it should right. because we wanted a million yeah. bucks at first you know right. yeah we suggested that they phase it they just didn't understand us right so they didn't apply yeah. with that in right mind. yeah i mean I know at one point I was hoping that they would have an architect and engineer and then have, you know, fold this into a bigger project and have funding that would mm-hmm. do a much better assessment to come in and, right. you know, as right. Right. So even now it's just like, Oh, we have an estimate. Let's go with it. But, you know, Robin, I know you're asking, is that, I mean, is it the right approach or is it enough even? Yeah. I mean, and from a, from a preservation standpoint, and this is why I asked the question of Kuhn Riddle, and I, you know, I'm kind of curious what there is in terms of flexibility to pick this project down the road a little bit. You know, I was like, if we're looking for twenty thousand dollars to button, the, and I asked this question very specifically to just button up the roof so that it doesn't leak anymore, not replace it. You know, and he said it was in like reasonable shape, so that you buy yourself another year to really develop the project in a an appropriate way. And what was the answer? I mean, he, he said yes, but they just, you know, this is the challenge is that you really need a, you know, you need a historic preservation architect, mm-hmm. you know, looking at the whole project and doing all, it's, it, it's too much to ask the building owners of that particular building I wonder to understand if things to, at that level. It, since there looks like there might be pretty much enough money, I wonder if you were to argue for this amount for this roof and then if it's granted come back to them and say let's look at the best way to use this money now that you have it Mm -hmm. well that's an interesting perspective yeah i mean they need so much that this would be a start you could have well rough button up as you say and then you could also have somebody come and give them a better consultation maybe yes right no i think that that's that's a great suggestion um and we would, I so I would just need to to get the commission's confirmation that that would be, it would be a condition, right, upon the award that we would award them the one hundred and fifty eight seven. But they would would they come back to the historical commission? I mean, this is you know this is kind of well, the question. Would CPA is, allow something different to be done with the money? They usually recommend a specific project or. Yeah. So right. I mean, I, I think it could be. So, if it's related to the roof, maybe. Right. right. Or, you know. Used maybe. slightly differently. Um, yeah. Can I just add, I'm, I'm, I'm all for helping them as much as we can, but I'm slightly uncomfortable because um, they don't, if you could give them the money, but they don't seem to understand what the process should be. And and I feel like, well, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. I think you're right. And I think that they're just at a disadvantage and what they need is the right consultant. And yeah, this is do. my frustration is that they just don't have the right consult- consultant yet who's coming to the table before them, you know, or who could come to the Historic Commission um, with them. And, you know, we could ask those questions and the consultant, you know, could be like, okay, yeah. yep, we're going to do this and this and we're going to phase that. Because there are all these these questions. The other piece of it, and I hate to go on and on, but it's um, is the fact that whatever they do has to fit with the secretary's standards. But we don't even have anybody any. And Nate, you can speak to this, or we don't have to speak to it. But as far as I know, we don't utilize anyone to make sure that the secretary's standards are being followed in the scope of work before the work begins. So. Um, I really want to fund the church and I'm just really frustrated with the fact that there isn't that consultant there that we can talk to to say, what if we just button up the roof and then 
you know, we get more numbers and we revisit everything in the next round, you know, but and, also, the, and the church itself is, isn't deteriorating. Sort of going off of uh, Becky's point, like you, the kind of application process is a demonstration of your capability to right. like, to kind of see this through and it doesn't, it doesn't stop once the money is granted, like somebody has to be there to oversee the whole construction or, you know, repair process. Um, so, we, right. is, it, is it possible to take their application and say to CPA, we think we should just grant them some money to have a consultant do a better I was thinking analysis? that too. Yeah. Is that something that we can spawn, Nate? Yeah, so that's where I think there is disagreement about the interpretation of historic preservation. And so, you know, I would say it's eligible. I think other staff in the CPA coalition will say no, because it's not directly related to the preservation of a building. But the irony is if you just fold it into a you know total project cost and you say you have 20% for soft costs or whatever, then it's eligible, but not mm -hmm. as a standalone project, which yeah. to me is, you know, um, semantics, but, you know, yeah. it's, that's the way they look at it. So in that case, it's like, yeah, apply for half a million, knowing that 150,000, whatever, is going to be the engineering and architecture. And we require that first, right? So it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of how it was looked at for, say, these preservation restriction consultant. Like, oh, we can roll it into a project cost, but as a standalone thing, it's not eligible. It's like, well, what's the difference, really? Mm -hmm. um, right. And so, but that's just, you know. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Right, yeah, I, I don't know what to do. I almost feel like we... Uh, Rob, maybe we ask Robin. Can can we have one hundred fifty thousand go to the church for architectural engineering, and they come back next year? I mean, yeah, I looked. I was just looking at the minutes from the meeting when they said one hundred sixty thousand, and they said, "Yeah, they're not even sure if that's accurate." And you know, mm -hmm. I know Sam had asked some follow up questions, and so it's just, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't. I, I know they. I know the building needs it, and both buildings actually, right? So the parish hall, and right, the but. Needed. It's just, is it, Oh yeah. We, we don't know what's the priority, right? Is it the roof? Right. Is it the foundation? Is it parts of the siding is rot, rotting? I mean, we don't- Well, it's right. all because I of mean, the roof. Like, I think that's pretty right. well determined that the, the siding and the foundation are because the roof has been leaking. Right. But I mean, but I think that yeah. point is, is honest that how do you reward a very poor application where they have no idea what they're asking for and then not set a precedent that they can keep doing this and getting money for it in a way. I mean, well, that's that, right. what you're saying, right? Well, um, well then, can, can the CPA committee say to them, um, we're going to give you a percentage of this to get a consultant and change, I mean, they'd be changing it. But that's what that we say. That that says you can't just do a consultant on its own. It has to be part of a larger project. That's what you were talking right. about, Nate. Yeah. Okay. Right. So my question is, I guess, then my next question is, can we push this particular project off cycle? Can we delay it? You know, because we have, you know, we hold this, and this, you know, I don't quite understand from the town's perspective. We hold, we hold these reserve funds every year. I mean, that's the whole purpose of them. They're, that they're there to draw on when we need to. The town went off cycle for the for the grant for Kendrick Park, I think, um, you know, we had a special meeting for that. So, you know, it, it, it's this, you know, it's this like conundrum where if, you know, you're a big foundation and you've got, you know, 50 different applications for five different plots and, you know, you just pick the five things, but if you're the town and this is such a significant resource and it's threatened by its current condition and yet the, the application itself isn't sufficient enough for, you know, a good, a full, you know, historic preservation award. That's why I wanted an estimate on, just give me an estimate on like how we keep the building from deteriorating until we can figure out what the whole package, maybe, you know, for everything it needs then. Maybe it would work though, to go back to my original idea that you say, we're going to give them uh, we, we want to give them 160,000 and say to them from CPA, 
This is money to start you on the preservation route. It includes repairing the roof this year so that it no longer leaks for the time being and rolled into that based upon what Nate was saying, a percentage goes to a con consultant. And this is part of the larger plan that you have, which is multi-year. And this is the first kind of down payment. But next time you need to come or off cycle, you need to come with a very clear application, you know, of exactly what's needed and how much it's going to cost with a professional um, behind it. So my I, I don't know how we give them, I mean, the, the, the proposal that they're asking for is the 158,000 is linked to a specific estimate for specific work. Right. So I don't right. know if we can redirect that to different work. And, and then the next thing I would say is somebody has to, and I think that this is maybe our job, we have to find a way to give people names of consultants that we can mm -hmm. refer them to to do this kind of work. Because yeah. if we say come back next year, they're not going to. They're just well, no, never going to be in that kind of place. I mean, that yeah, that's what I. Yeah, right. okay, right. Of course, yeah. If I, I think mean, the reserves. Right. I mean, Robin, it's interesting. The reserves are usually voted for a category, not for a specific project. So in the past, we've done it for housing, and then each year the committee, CPA committee, has to vote it. So, you know, it could be that we recommend to the committee that they set, set aside one hundred fifty thousand for historic projects, and they put that in reserve this year. Um, and then it could be that it's available if needed, if uh, say an off cycle or if the church comes back. And so that's that's the way it's worked in the past with housing. Uh, we've done that twice okay. with housing. So, so um, it might, you're current, saying it might be best to just turn them down and then work from scratch off well, cycle on as needed. But I, I want to understand the reserve process here for a second, because right now there's $500,000 in reserve and I don't think it's allocated to any particular category. And my weak understanding is that that five hundred thousand dollars, if we, if you know, if we needed to do something tomorrow because you know the roof caved in, or so it's caved in on one side, but um, that we would draw on that five hundred thousand. If we put something in reserve from this year's funds, it won't be available until July, right? Like the whole problem is they have that whole section of the roof that's falling apart that's only going to get worse with the snow like that's something something needs to be done now well even if we did it even now we wouldn't have i think that the five hundred thousand is actually for housing i thought oh, it was a it? Reserve, but I, I i thought it was I, I thought it was just general but okay yeah um so i don't know if the cpa has right just general funds available and even if they did um, it wouldn't be necessarily available until July unless it could somehow be taken from a previous fiscal year. So that's well, that's what I thought. The res the reserve that we have is from that five hundred thousand dollars from last fiscal year. So that, that was, should yeah. be. I thought that was housing. Yeah. So I mean, that's interesting though. Okay. We have to get clarification from Sonia or Sean. I mean, would we be able okay. to do that for the church? I just, yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if we could have. Maybe we need to ask them to consult Chris Riddle again and get a, a, a like you asked Robin, just what is necessary for um, for now, you know? Okay, so if I, but so- Essentially, let, I would say if you're me, prioritizing in the vote, the, the fully realized applications that have specific numbers that are tied to estimates that are genuine, would get right. top priority. And then you work with somebody who's messed up like this, but you don't necessarily right. support it in the same way. Right. right, and all I'm trying to do is figure out, is to articulate something that the commission supports that I can bring to the committee tomorrow. So, you know, I think that we what we're- We don't I, know. We don't really but, know what the parameters are. I think we've kind of come to the point where we have to ask questions to people. Um, Robin, I have a question. So the, the CPA doesn't award the, when do they make the decision? They'll is make that, the decision, I think around January. Is that right, Nate? It wasn't on no. last year. Yeah, yeah so the committee, was, yeah, the committee recommends the funding to the town council and then the town council right. votes. And so the okay. CPA committee tries to- And then it's not available till July 1. Right. right. So the council right. may not vote until April even, March, April. 
on the funding. So it's mm. part of their budget cycle. It depends on, you know, how, when the funding is, you know, if they're, yeah, it's funny. I was looking at those Sonia's numbers. It might be that there is the half million in reserve that's unallocated. That's um, FY23. So could they actually say it's available now for a project? Um, it'd have to go kind of quickly to council. So even if the CPA committee were to make recommendations and then have council vote, I mean, maybe they would vote early on just one on the reserve funding in February or March, but you know, that's still not, um, you know, immediate, yeah. but. And we're not talking about the church being able to front this money and then get reimbursed, right? They don't have it. No. Yeah. They can't, you can't reimburse them. That's the, that's the other thing. Like oh. even, even after town council approves it, you, you can't start work until July 1. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, I just think that they didn't listen the times that we talked to them and now we're in this pickle. Right. And it's, it's, so let me ask that then what are, what are, what's the, if I came to the meeting tomorrow, cause we're not gonna vote on the slate tomorrow, I don't think. Um, and we, I think we have done in the past, we've had like a full slate where we took one project, didn't put it on the slate. I think we did that with Jones, right? Cause it required mm -hmm. further deliberation. So, so that we're not pressured into making this this decision right now that we have um, we're, we're in support of supporting the church but we have just have reservations about the estimates that have come in and we need a better um, um, we, we, we want to go back to the applicant and I can you know I can talk to 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 Ken Riddle too you know if that helps like I could be on the call I mean I think sometimes there's just you know there's there's just not clarity between all the parties like I've been trying to do this ever since it came up trying to get trying to find the right person who could who could look at this project and say okay here's what we do first here's what we do second here's what we do third here's where we go for the estimates you know it's kind of straightforward yeah. but nobody's kind of standing up to to do that job so I would suggest that tomorrow I say we want to Put off voting on this one on the if, if it comes to a slate vote we want to leave this one off we want to continue to confer with coon riddle and the applicant to see if we can come up with a better plan for what needs to be done now and then how it can be funded like if there is twenty thousand dollars that can come out of the fy23 reserve to button up the roof that could happen really fast if you can get a contractor you know would that be the best you know first step to take and that sounds good as long that. as uh, all the money is then voted away. As long yeah, as there's still some money. If you yeah. come back and you say, okay, that actually is the exact estimate and that is what needs to be done, and we do well, want 60 right. what is it still going to be there? What I could do is suggest that we put that 150000 in reserve, which would be available July 1, and it would be dedicated to historic preservation. Mm -hmm. I think that would be. The way to handle it and the town can help me you know with that but that's that would be the the, the right. other piece we'd like we'd like to do a set aside of the hundred fifty thousand so that when we get this all straightened out that's what needs to happen as long as the other projects can get funded that that doesn't the other those. no yeah. i i don't i don't think that i don't think it will be an issue i think okay. there's enough flexibility in housing i don't know i mean it it depends on um how how the other CPA committee may, members feel about prioritizing historic preservation over affordable housing. That's really yeah, yeah. The, the gist of it. But yeah. I, I that I can't predict. <laughs> but at least yeah. at least I have a game plan for 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 the North Church. Okay. Yeah. Hey Madeline, you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Does that make sense, Nate? No, it does. Yeah. I mean, I've, I spoke with um, some staff today. I mean, I think, you know, I know some of the housing proposals just, you know, they can't be funded at the request, but, right. you know, I, I feel like, you know, even partial requests for the housing ones will get you to a million dollars. Um, and then that, you know, that still leaves almost 900,000 left for the rest of the proposal, say, um, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on how the committee 
you know, how they really feel about the other proposals. So yeah. I think I think the strategy we came up with for, for the preservation projects sounds good. Okay. Uh, I like that trying to do the reserve. I guess the right the question really is how does the rest of the committee feel about you know the other you know there's you know there's a number of recreation projects and and then housing projects. Or well, we can't predict yeah. that. Yeah. We can't. No, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, and like I, I said, in, I think yeah, we've in given my, Robin enough yeah. direction, and we can move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, next is recruiting new members. We're just, once again, Nate and I put that on because it's so essential that you all reach out to residents in Amherst. And um, uh, he is, uh, Paul is going back to that person, Nate, right? That I had um, recruited yeah, yeah. Who, who volunteered. So there may be somebody there, but we'll still need somebody else. So please try to think of people. Um, they don't have to be super uber qualified. Um, if they're willing to do some work and, you know, we do have qualified people on the committee. We basically need volunteers who are going to take up projects and follow through. Yeah. And it's not, yeah. And I, some of this is on the agenda as well, just to let you know, it's not a violation of open meeting law to right to meet with people or to contact them and have them, you know, they could reach out to myself or the town or even submit a, a form. It's not, you know, that's, that's perfectly acceptable to talk to people and say, look, the commission has openings. Um, and meet with them. So it's not, you know, it's not nefarious or anything. It's really no, when I send emails, I explain what the commission does, why preservation is important for the town, what their responsibilities would be, how often we meet, that kind of thing. So they knew right there in writing what the the deal would be. And then I put I put a link, a, a hot link to the form to fill out, you know, for a citizen, what's it called? citizen something or other. I say activity form, but I'm not sure if that's what it is anymore. Yeah, well, it used to be. So used to be. I, had, I had somebody at my house last night who I know has been interested in joining a committee and I'm pretty sure she's put an application and she doesn't have any historic preservation experience. Um, how well, do we feel about that? Not everybody on the committee does. Not everybody on the commission okay. does. They're interested right. and they're supportive and they're willing to do volunteer work and stuff, you know. Okay. Great. Right. I will. Uh, I'll let her know again. Um, sure. So, should she? I, I know you have to submit the form, Nate. Is there any way to, you know, for her for that not to just get lost in I don't know whatever the. Are we you lost you, Robin. Oh, you sorry. Is there yeah, so it, anything? It, I, is she? Um, if she, it's a community activity form. I would just remind the person or anyone if uh, if you're if you're asking them. They, I think you you know you can. Um, check what board or committee you're interested in. Yes. And sometimes people will check everything. And sometimes okay. it might be specific to a few. And so I would just have, you know, they could submit more than one too. I would just have them do the, you know, historic uh, commission. And then that way, when we run a report on it or the town manager's office, it's visible that that's their interest. And so, okay, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any, it doesn't get lost. I think the town manager is aware of the vacancies. And I think um, in January, we're trying to pull together everyone for interviews. Um, you know, I, I think there had been an email sent out trying to get people to have availability in the next month or so to interview. Right. Good. Okay. So if everybody could work on that, it would be great if there were a bigger committee, a bigger commission where more of the work could be divvied out and we could do more, pro you all could do more projects. We as a town. Um, okay, public outreach and education. Um, this was on there just because Nate and I had talked about um, some of the things that I've been interested in seeing in the future and that I would be willing to help with. And one of those is something that Hetty and I had talked about, and that is to try to bring awareness of barn preservation to the level of house. And one of the things that's done by the historical society is, is to give tours of houses so that people think about their own and think about the value of older houses and you know all that and we thought this was a couple of years ago we talked about what about having barn tours um, and the historical society does houses we could do barns we could ask people to consider submitting their barn for a tour and you know they would spiffy it up and they could feel pride in their barn and a lot of people like to talk about the history of their barn or how it's being used or whatever and then 
if that kind of thing starts to over the years, you know, people go to them and start seeing them, it'll start to filter down that barns are worth saving. And then if you have one, you might, rather than tearing it down, you might want to fix it up and have it on the tour. Um, and then, of course, talk about CPA possible funding and that kind of thing. So that was just an idea I had, and I'm hoping uh, you all might want to run with it. And I'd be willing to come back and help after, you know, June is over. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I just did a whole barn survey for the end of my graduate program in Lebanon, New Hampshire. And I think I sent Jana, you and um, Nate an email about sponsoring this um, barn uh, preservation specialist. I yeah. went, he, he, was, he was my contact for the survey. He's a UNH uh, retired professor. He's mm -hmm. written a book. And um, I also went to one of his talks and it was great. And I thought that would be a great way to tie things in and we could conceivably- And uh, maybe, the public invited, yeah. right? Not just for us. Yeah, no, he- Invite yeah, the he public did, he, in the newspaper right. and we, yeah. He did the talk at like a little church and um, a bunch of people came. And um, so we would have something like that. And conceivably it could also be co-sponsored by the Western um, Mass uh commission coalition whatever there mm -hmm. um it, it get, to get in would get it um promoted through the listserv and and through um preservation mass too so that um that would be a nice start we could do that in the spring it covered it all the local yeah. media and yeah i think yeah. that's a great way to start and then maybe from there um start doing some tours of local barns because people would be aware then yep i think yep. it'd be great to do that um and I think we could start next summer. It would be a nice focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, and I maybe, right, maybe we start talking about it now when we plan, you know, two or three public forums, workshops, whatever we want to call them. But, you know, we could have this, um, you know, Robin, the professor you mentioned, um, and, and, you know, maybe we have a second one. Um, and, you know, we, it would be great just to have, you know, come up with, some formatting, you know, an agenda and everything, and then that could lead into something else. But it'd be great to have like a series of one or two meetings that are open to the public, whatever we want to call them. But, it, you know, the Housing Trust, I work with them, but, you know, uh, even during COVID, you know, in the course of three months, we had a, you know, workshop every month for three months and we covered, you know, affordable housing and diversity, affordable housing and seniors, affordable housing and transportation. And it was just, you know, we were able to have three or four speakers or two at a meeting um, and we try to advertise it and it was great we had anywhere from you know 30 to 50 people attend but it was just you know it was really helpful and after that I think one of them was also um, renting to people with vouchers or renting to affordable tenants and afterward you know um, a few property owners in town emailed me and, co and contacted me and said oh I you know I'm, I feel more comfortable now renting to someone who's lower moderate income you know, and that, you know, that was, you know, that's great, right? That's one of the benefits of doing this is just trying to get people more aware of the topic. And so, you know, I think one workshop would be great. It'd be great if we could talk about, could we have two or three? And that leads into maybe some, something happening on site over the summer at, you know, different properties. And so, you know, that could become a whole, you know, three to six month program. We, we start talking about this winter and. Maybe we could get New Hampshire. They have a really um, strong barn is mm -hmm. preservation project. Right, Hedy? Well, yeah. We can get them to do. come. And, or, we, used you know, to do we used to do it in the summer, and it was sponsored by the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, but Alliance. also the New Hampshire Historical Commission would get involved as well, and they would share their lists so that we could invite more and more people. I just wonder if, yeah. if they'd be, you know, they, I attended one of their seminars, if they'd be willing to just say, show us what they're doing you know, and talk to our people about what they've accomplished, that kind of thing, and give examples, visual examples that could excite our town's people. So. The um, New Hampshire Preservation Alliance is who set me up with my barn survey. So I know that they have the assessment program, which is what I based our proposal mm -hmm. off. And they, they also have a statewide um, tax abatement program, but I, could, I, have, uh, I can get in touch with Beverly Thomas. She's my contact there too. Great, great. Okay, well, um, that would be a wonderful thing to do in the near future. I think it would move things along because we've been focusing on outbuildings for a while and it would start to bring some of it um, to fruition. 
Okay, do we have anybody in the public waiting to comment, Nate? Is there anybody oh, there's, out there? There's two members. If you want to speak, you could raise your hand. Um, and let me know, let me tell you that um, we need you to state your full name and address and that you have up to three minutes um, to make a statement or ask a question. All right, Hilda, you can, you're allowed to speak. Yeah, I got two questions here. One is for the, I guess they're both for the Indy actually. Who are the stakeholders when you were talking about the preservation plan? Can you tell me? Can you answer yeah. that question? And then do you have do you have, a, do you have another question you want to ask, or do you want to have this one answered first? Well, that, that's a the other yeah. question. Yeah, answer that one. Then the other one's more complicated. Sure. Yeah, the stakeholders. I mean, we had talked about having you know local institutions, um, whether it's museums or different you know societies, organizations, with you know property owners. Um, so, you know, it's not, you know, just a range of even developers, just a range of having, you know, two or three stakeholder group meetings with, you know, it could be 10 stakeholders in each group. So having, you know, it could be 30 different uh, individuals involved. And so, um, you know, we had in, I think uh, I have on my list in front of me, but we had, you know, kind of a, a wide range of different stakeholders that we'd want to, um, to poll. You know, just be a matter of who's available and willing to come to those meetings. But we, you know, we try to cast a wide net to get different opinions and perspectives. Okay. And then I'm asking this question on behalf of several people who would like to know that you had Eric Redoya and he was greeted with great acclaim for his report on the um, historic preservation requirements of Jones Library. So the question that I'm asked to get from you is, what is the status of your required review of the possible adverse impacts of the Jones Library renovation project? I didn't understand the question. What is well, the-, the question is, what is the status in, in so far as they're now going forward with plans and there are certain requirements of mass historical that the, and especially from Eric Rodoyo's report of the interior being preserved as well as the exterior. And you guys have that purview to look at it. When is that gonna happen? Oh, that's based upon, yeah, the concern that things haven't been met um, according to requirements. Right. My understanding is that because everything was slowed down um, during COVID and during um, re rethinking the funding and revoting and things being held up, that we're only now getting to the point where we have the information to send in, and so that's that's being done by the town. Um, you know, we can't control getting that information, and you have to have a certain have it at a certain point before it can be submitted. But we're so not. You, you people don't discuss it in a public meeting, what the adverse impacts might be. It's not discussed locally. Oh, no, so right now we haven't, there hasn't been that discussion. So the library, as Jan was saying, they're uh, reformulated some of the plans and we're still, we would still need certain information to then have this meeting, this discussion. And so it hasn't, you know, um, you know, at, at, you bring it up, may, I made a note to myself to follow up, but we haven't, you know, last time I, the conversation was, or there was email between Ben and the library, and they said they were going to reach back out to us when they were ready to have this. And so, um, you know, that they haven't, but there had been communication just a few months ago about this. And so, mm -hmm. may, you know, so my understanding is they just haven't, have, they don't have the information ready to bring back. It all had so, to be revised a couple of times, so... But why, why are they continuing to spend money to revise it if they haven't been before your board yet? That, that's the question, I guess. I don't think they're spending money to revise it. They're just because of the change in the funding concerns, the, um, the change, they had to wait a long time during that revote and everything. I, I, think, I don't think there's more money being spent. I just think it's time passing, my understanding. Can I uh, make, yeah, um, I think the 
I had this conversation um, a while ago and understanding the um, project notification form process is that the, the, the final pro the, the project needs to reach needs to reach a stage of kind of semi-permanence before mm -hmm. there's any point in reviewing the any any if if there are any um, negative impacts because if the project is going to continue to go through revisions you're just wasting the time of the commission and you're addressing things that may or may not be a problem so there's essentially a a kind of tipping point that you reach where the the pnf process comes in and we just haven't reached that the the, the project is not defined enough at this point and I, that's it might sound a little silly but from the architectures architect arch, architect standpoint um, it's not defined enough yet to warrant that discussion and that when it is defined enough that that is when the PNF process will go through and it'll come before us and we'll, we'll have that. So I think we're just not, we're, we're not far enough along yet. Thank you for that answer, but I don't find it very enticing or satisfying. And I will pass them on. Well, that's pretty much the case. We've been waiting and until they give us the material, we can't really look at a finished proposal. So thanks for bringing those concerns to us, Hilda. Okay. Really? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I feel like a broken record. But... Well, we, we always have the same response because that's we're in the same process as we've been all along. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what else to say. Well, some of us are just worried that they get too far and then, then you can't backtrack. Yeah, but it has to be at a certain point before we can, um, you know, look at it as a presentation. If it's still uncertain, then it doesn't do any good. Is it my, my under, understanding that there actually aren't a set of presentation drawings for the library renovation and demolition? We've seen schematics, we've seen drawings that suggest changes to the front door and the canopy over the front door related to the new the new proposals by Feingold Alexander. But it it seems to me that there aren't there, there isn't yet a proper set of architectural drawings. And when there are, we would have that discussion, right. Hilda. Yeah. Um, or specs, drawings or specs. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, it's such a large project that it has it has to come to that, and you know, it's a it is very. I can see why it would be frustrating from a kind of community perspective, but there are so many other pieces of this that haven't been sorted out to do with financing that I just don't think that it just it just is a question that has to be asked at the at the moment when those drawings are available and the financing is clear and i don't know what else to say but it i i can see why you're asking the question now i'm asking it on behalf of somebody else who can't be there mm -hmm. okay well we've we've had letters and we know this is an issue and we you know we're waiting too um, and we're concerned but um we're part of a much bigger process so as soon as it happens, we'll, you know, you'll be the first to hear it because you're always in our meetings, which is not having come for a while, actually. Well, that's true. You weren't at the last couple, but hopefully you'll be at the others. So, okay. Thank you very much. Any other, we had one other public comment you said, Nate? Or one other member, but not, I'm not sure if they have a comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyone else want to make a comment before we close this section of the agenda? Okay, um, unanticipated items. You did have one thing. I'm gonna give you five minutes to present this and get through it. <laughs> yeah, so the North Amherst Fire Station, um, you know, had, came to the Design Review Board and they are looking to replace siding. Um, the description's right here. They have uh, T111 panel siding in certain locations on the building and they're hoping to replace it with 
metal siding uh, painted red. And the design review board said, you know, so here's an example of where uh, on the south elevation where they would put this um, metal siding over the, the paneling. And it's similar to the paneling in terms of the design. You know, the T111 has, um, you know, this a vertical pattern. Uh, and then here's another uh, kind of illustration where on the north elevation where it would be. Uh, and these examples show that the shaded areas are where it would be be replacing existing siding. It would actually go over the existing siding, so they're not going to remove the, the paneling. They're going to put the metal on top of it, and it you know, would have some depth to it then a little bit. So the Is design review board- Is this building, Nate? Not this necessarily, building. but the DRB felt that because of the architecture, somewhat unique architecture, would the historical commission want to review this more? Um, you know, it's probably about 50 years old. And so the question was, you know, does, is, is this, you know, something, it's not a demolition, it wouldn't trigger demolition review, but is it something that the commission would want to offer recommendations on a review? And so- Do you have photos of the current status? I, you know, I don't, I could, I was, I could just pull up a Google street view. Um, I should have done that. This came in late and I didn't get to it. Yeah, I, I know. I, um, right now it's like stone colored. This would be a major contrast, right? Well, the panels were painted, but they since faded. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think it will look um, as like a big, like a big contrast, but when it was probably, um, actually done it was you know it wouldn't be it's just you know the building wasn't um maintained mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let me see if i can nate i just emailed you a picture from wikipedia commons of the entire building it looks brutalist to me right that's so that's what it was it is and yeah, it's yeah. definitely brutalist yeah yeah, no, so no, I think, no. yeah. <laughs> that's not the definition of brutalism, but that's another story. Well, but it's, I, it, I said brutalist. It's not so, brutalist. That's, so here's it's, the, that's um, the, that's so the other area. So this area right here, which is faded, um, yeah. okay. would all be now the red you okay. know, vertical metal. You know, this up here uh, where it's kind of white would be as well. Yikes, uh, they want to paint it red? Well, they want so to have been. This had, yeah, this had been painted, and obviously it looks like it's just completely faded. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, the style is a ripoff of what UMass has. They're trying to play with being in the north near UMass, yeah. my sense is. And um, putting, making yeah. it red metal is going to look totally different from the reference to that style. Um, but I'm I sorry, can, was it originally? Oh, go ahead. You know, I was just going to add, I was at the meeting last night uh, or Monday night, and the, the board was very much in favor of the attractiveness of the change. It really does look nice. Um, but the concern was, is it historic? And should it remain as it is? Because it's building of the nature uh, of, of the same time period as many of the UMass building. So that's why they decided to bring it here to have us take a look at it. Right. Yes, yeah, too bad it's uh, the sunlight washes it out, but then facing the road, right, this upper banding right here, and then here would be- yeah, You said um, it's faded, but what was it? It wasn't red. It? Yeah, it's funny. It's They said it was painted. I mean, so it's T11, so it's a, like a composite material. You know, right now, you, you know, you can get T111 at like Home Depot. It comes in like a four by eight sheet. It's often what you see on sheds. You know, it's almost look like a, as a, very narrow, almost like board and batten look, yeah. right? It's, uh, vertical recesses. And so typically it's painted. Um, I actually wouldn't know. I thought it was, I thought at one point someone, I saw Maureen today, I thought she said it had been painted a color, but. Um, That's what it says in the application, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's so yeah. faded that. Um, yeah, it looks white. I mean, it's hard to see any color left if it had. Yeah. Color Here's from 2009. I love Google Street View when you can do this. I mean, it's, faded then. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just primed, it, you know, comes pre-primed, maybe it was just never painted. Um, or they've repainted it the same color. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, how do people feel? I mean, I think it would definitely take away from the, the brutalist reference <laughs> to keep Patty happy. <laughs> 
I yeah, I, mean, I actually found a 1975 photo of it from. Oh, did you? The, the like um, opening ceremony. <laughs> can you share the screen? I don't know. Can I? Do I have that capability? I think yeah. panelists yeah. are able to if you have it on. Yeah, there. it's at the bottom. It's green. Share That's screen. Great. It has to be uh, open. The image we... has to be open to be able to then share. I think it says disabled. Uh, no, it does. Mm -hmm. hmm. Madeline, how did you find that? On newspapers.com. I do oh. use that for a lot of research. One panelist can share at a time. Oh, it's yeah. a, I mean, it's a black and white photo, but. Oh, that doesn't help us for color. <laughs> But it's it's a very it's light gray, right? Maybe it was never painted. Maybe it was just painted light. Um, it, it was my I, understanding from the meeting that it was a lighter color. Um, it was that sort of white gray. Okay. And they're okay, choosing well, red just because of the kind of fire engine association. I mean, why red? <laughs> why not really like you know, um, because it's of UMass, attractive. it looks nice. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, everyone really liked it, but the concern was, did it need to remain the same? Hmm. Um, so let me just share my screen quickly. The metal they're proposing, um, you know, has twenty-four, right. you know, or I don't know how many colors, right? So the the, you know, the gauge metal has the very a variation in color. So would the commission say find something that matches uh, what's mm -hmm. there? Well, it's 50 can years old, you know, can it's, ask why? it's not 50 years of 75 oh. is when it was I, open. I don't know exactly, exactly when it was built. Well, Madeline said that her photo was from when it was open and that was 1975. So it's only yeah. 40. So I've got December 5th, 75, it was put into operation. That's the town website. Yeah. So technically. Yeah. Right. Well, that even that, even, even that, that it's not old enough, you know, I, my my i like i'm interested in the use of the metal siding maybe that's being considered for efficiency reasons or extra protection for the building you know that but maybe it should stay the same color i i mean i don't know <laughs> or just a neutral color if the if we, want, we could put it on uh january's um yeah agenda, or we could try to have a you know something tonight it is an unanticipated item so i'm losing focus yeah i think okay, i can't do the math can i, I ask was, a question about yes. why are we having a discussion about changing the color is it because it's historic it blends in the environment i mean that was the it's not, i mean maybe i'm wrong but it was the design review board's decision about does it blend in does it work and they kicked it to us only from the historical perspective. Well, that's what I'm saying is that from a historical perspective, if this building was meant to okay. conform to the look of the UMass buildings nearby, putting bright red siding is, is gonna defeat that. It won't anymore. It won't have that affinity. That's why more of a neutral color would keep that look. So, I mean, a gray or a beige or something, and they could use the same material, but maybe what should be done is to look more at the UMass buildings, at least their original look and in 75 or something and get a better sense of how it might fit that better, you know, and then come back and say, it should be this color or it should, or that would be fine or whatever. But I think Nate's right. Let's put it on the next agenda so that there's a little research time. Does everybody feel like that? Or do we feel like it doesn't even belong here because it's only 48 years old? Robin I, I agrees. Kind of, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm not sure why we're weighing in so heavily on it because of the age of the building. Well, only That's because just, the you know, the Maureen's email had said that, you know, it's pending a review of the historical commission. So, it, it, you know, if, you know, typically they can ask advice of other boards and committees, and it seems like they have at this, for this project, you know, if they hadn't, then we wouldn't necessarily be involved. The commission wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, Becky, your, your group decided to send it to us, right? So. Um, they, 
they decided because there was a concern of one person about his historic value. Um, everybody liked the design and they all voted and said, yeah, we really like the color, we like the design, but let's double check and make sure there's not a, a historic reason to keep it the way it is. Well, that's what I'm suggesting. There is a historic reason if it's supposed to be, have an affinity with the architecture at UMass. Okay, that's what I would suggest. So I, I would say uh, maybe a little research on the buildings, maybe find out a little bit about the design and what the purview was, what the, you know, the plan was, why was it designed to look like that? And then go from there. It's just hard to make a decision out of the blue, you know, with a few minutes notice. Is that good with everybody? Yeah, that's good. Okay, great, because we're, uh, we're, we've gone longer than we ever have under my, um, and I don't like this, people are getting tired. So yeah, we, we, we're going to miss you, Jen. <laughs> well, you ever need somebody to come in and say it's time to stop the meeting, just call me. Um, next meeting date, there is a public hearing for demolition okay. application, and when is that firing uh, date? January 11th. And so, you know, there's two, one was just received um, last week too. So there's two demolition requests in and they'll both be going to a hearing on January 11th. Okay. And there's, you know, so, there's been a few, a few others. Um, you know, we have a new permitting software and there's been some building permit applications to remove or demolish parts of buildings. And the applicants have yet to submit, you know, essentially a demolition application uh, and so it could be that in February two or March, there's another public hearing. Just, it seems like, you know, people are kind of getting projects ready, whether it's for spring or just winter. Um, but, you know, there are- have the been other deadline coming up is January 11th. Yeah, so for these two, January 11th is it. You know, if, if we can't okay. meet then, I mean, it seems like everyone I polled the commission, it seemed like uh, the fifth and the 11th, the 11th works better for me. I'm now, you know, so Ben's left and then Maureen, the other planner is leaving. He's leaving, I saw that. And so I've been having like three or four meetings a week. Um, and so I have one January 3rd and 4th, okay. and then I have one the 10th, 9th, 10th, and the 11th. So um, I have my share of night meetings. So sometimes it's my availability as well, but the 11th, it works for the timing requirements. And you, you pulled everybody and everybody could do it, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody put January 11th down and then um, February, you can wait because you want to see what the, if right. there are any more applications, right? right. Is that good mm -hmm. with everyone? Okay. Well, I wish you well. Um, I hope it, it's an Thank easy you, next year. Let me know what happens with the preservation plan. I'm really interested in seeing how that goes out. Yep. And, Thank um, you, Jen. I enjoyed working with yeah. all of you. Thank you for being such a good leader. Um, yep. Keeping just... us on task. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to keep your name on the, I'm going to keep your name on my email group. So, you know, you can either read the emails or delete them. But <laughs> Okay, that's fine. I mean, I, I, once we get back to summer and I'm over with this insane semester, I'd be happy to help out on projects. So. Great. That's great. Good luck with everything. Thanks. Thank you so much. You all take care. Thanks, oh wait, we have to move to adjourn. Who wants to move? I move. I I make a motion that we move to adjourn. Anyone want a second? Second. All in favor? Show of hands. Aye. Okay. Have a good holidays, hey, everybody. You know what, adjourn? <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> okay, yes, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.